teenage Asian girls in Kenya go through a network of misery, sexual slavery, and trauma. Some Kenyan clubs and hotels are being used as cover as young girls are subjected to human trafficking and slavery by the magnets. We are from poor family. We, for bread, we came for dance only. The misery of prostitution and hopeless debt binds the girls in a bondage, many calling them the Mujra slaves. After molestation, after harassment, mentally torture and abusing words for our mothers, everything. From South Asian origin to many other nationalities, young women are being driven into modern slavery in Kenya, all in desperate attempts to survive and thrive. There is South Africa in the South, Kenya in the East, and Nigeria in the West. So when you talk about it as an issue, of course, it's a huge issue. My name is Hussein Mohammed, and this is the story of human trafficking cartels under the backdrop of forced labor and sexual exploitation. We are about to get to this dark world of external human trafficking here in Westlands, Nairobi, to meet up with some of the young Asian teenage girls who are locked up and left voiceless here in Nairobi. Westlands neighborhood in Nairobi, Kenya's capital city, is the location which hosts some of the teenage girls who are recruited to come to Kenya to be part of the sensual Mujra dancers that many male South Asians and also Kenyans love to watch. In the rooms, sounds of young, tormented teenage girls telling the story of bondage and servitude in this house. But apart from the sexually charged dancing, the girls, many of whom don't speak English, are occasionally forced to provide extra services. There are at least four rooms here. One of the teenage girls we call her Anya, which is not her real name, walks me through the rooms. Their dance costumes hang in the clogged up room where banked beds are placed as the young girls sit idly and show about their future in this foreign country. Anya has been here for months. She's weary and helpless. Her agent goes by the name Sunny. He had promised her and others a good life in dancing here in Kenya. In India, his agent, Sunny, he fraud us. He said, they, you have to dance only, nothing else. But here, scenario is different. Here, we have forced to touch our body by customers and all that smooch and kisses on stage and all, all things. So we are not comfortable. We want to go India. We want to go India. Mumbai, India. The air is smoky from the cold burning stoves. The stench of perfumes collides with onions, chili and garam masala in the walks of women cooking on the streets. Life is different here. During the day, you'll find blankets and mattresses on the streets. Hundreds of poor families spend their nights here. Most of the girls we spoke to, like Anya, come from this kind of environment, running away only to find themselves in the hands of traffickers. We are from poor family. We, for bread, we came for dance only. Like we want neat and clean work, only dance, he said. But here scenario is different. We cannot do like this, all this dirty work, no. But at present, uh, what I'm aware is that in certain states of India, particularly Maharashtra, which is where the city of Mumbai is located, is the capital of the state of Maharashtra, it is actually banned. Millions of men, women and children are currently victims of human trafficking around the world, bought and sold as commodities into prostitution and forced labor. In East Africa, Kenya is the main source, transit and destination for human trafficking. Many of the girls here are Nepalese and Indians. 
Most of their time is spent at nearby clubs in Westlands. Anya tells me that most of the girls were brought here to perform what is referred to as Mujra dancing. Katie and News has learned that more than five locations in Nairobi and Mombasa offer these dances. Dances that take place every night and the joints are usually filled. So cautious is the underhand dance deals that only loyal and trusted customers pay and get the extra services by the dancers. We have to talk about the fact that these women were living somewhere where people were actually seeing the movements of these women. These women were taken to, cl to a club where there were people actually watching this happening. Anya has gone through all that and now she's left broken and does not want to recall those instances. Every time he wants a, a, a everything from us. Uh, he asked for outside, go outside with us. He asked for everything. What can I say? Don't want to say. <laughs> we have seen that in the past they are being coerced uh, into parting with their passports. So they are there without their passports. They are not allowed to go outside of you know the place where they are kept. Their accommodation is all very basic. Uh, some of them are not even given proper food to eat and they're asked to do household tasks for people who run these establishments and they're not paid their money, then there can be torture and, of course, uh, exploitation of a worse kind, which is basically, uh, you know, leading them into immoral activity. Here in the club, every girl has a tip jar. Most of the tips are in dollars. The owner always on the lookout for which girls don't provide good treatment to the clans. Anya tells me if you don't get good tips from the clans, you are bound to get worse treatment, which includes being denied food and also a salary deducted. Most of them are not usually paid. <laughs> Katie and News Crime and Investigation Desk can confirm that most of the girls enter the country on a tourist visa but end up working as Mujra dancers, strippers or sex workers. The traffickers pay for their visas, air tickets and accommodations in Kenya. They refer to this as the debt bondage. That is, they are exploited by the traffickers until their debt is paid. I cannot claim to have expertise on the subject. But whatever I have read and come across, it's a very old and traditional form of entertainment, much before, of course, you know, television and radio came into being. And uh, th these were places where girls used to sing classical music and perform classical dances uh, to an audience which comprised essentially of men. Essentially of men. Essentially of men. in the dance of Mujra. It is a Saturday evening at a house in Westlands. <laughs> Dressed in their flashy traditional attire, the teenage girls dance in front of these money bags. Victims. Uh, they, they, uh, when they are being brought, you know, they, to, to them, they, uh, they, they don't know that uh, actually they are being duped. It's only when they arrive here and then they are given different assignments from the ones they are being told. This receipt shows the client paid up to 10,000 Kenya shillings for the act. Different currencies are used in payment of the dance. Katie and News can now reveal the faces behind the syndicate. Bahadur bin Magar, a Nepalese national, is the accountant of this plums restaurant. Ogosh Subhankar, an Indian national, is the DJ of the club. Both of them are on a three-month tourist visa, and they have no work permits. I see when they come here, they smile, they dance, and dance, okay, finish. They never come, they never even come and say hello, never. I have never seen them to come and say hello because even I'm Indian, they should know that Indian, Indian, okay, come like this, never. Sure. I played a song there, I sit here, that's all. 
According to Section 43 of the Kenyan Citizenship and Immigration Act, stipulates that foreigners should apply for work permits before they arrive in the country. This requirement was introduced by the Security Amendments Law Act of 2014. However, it is rarely enforced. When the minister made that pronouncement, it was just operationalizing that particular law. So what we are doing right now is uh, to arrange a meeting with stakeholders so that we put in place regulations which will now guide the, actually the operationalization of this law. The ringleader of the group here is Tapa Vikrant. Foreigner certificates seen by Katie and News show his alien card expired a year ago. Vikrant is said to be harboring the eight foreigners here in Nairobi at this villa house in Westlands. However, Vikrant says the girl are just artists. What about girls? Hmm? Just dance there. They, know, they are artists. They know how to perform. What about the girls? So I don't know anything. So just tell them. Then come, come, come. I don't know. So it's totally clear that whatever it is, he knows it. We don't know anything. He tell me if you are telling me, okay, take my car and go and drop my friend to that. The same thing is like this here. Uh, he told that I'm not here. My DJ is going to come within 15 days. Do one thing. Just help me. Uh, put some song. And you stay here around the outside. Uh, sit and drink like this. Whatever you want. So I just put all the song. I and I sit here like this. Mm. So just like this. Only. Brokers of work permits are said to have infiltrated the immigration offices. Uh, of Former National Intelligence Service NIS Director of Counterterrorism Alexander Muteshi was recently appointed to head the Department of Immigration Services. Yes, we have had quite a number of cases and uh, uh, of Nepalese and also Indians. And uh, uh, for Nepalese, what we have uh, within our records is that they are, they are normally deceived that uh, our brought here has. Uh, cultural troop dancers, but when they come here as a cultural troop dancers, then uh, they end up being actually exploited uh, sexually. Uh, uh, as for Indians, uh, some of the major cases we have about Indians is uh, with regard to them coming here as, uh, uh, be, to be married, but when they reach here, uh, they later really found out that they are duped, and now they, they, it's like uh, they are later left to, to, with, with no immigration status. So, uh, in that situation now, also it becomes a problem to them because they find themselves to be here illegally. Sources close to the police tell KTA News that most of the suspects arrested admitted to bribing the area Parklands police officers. Allegedly, during the weekend, some of the officers are sent to take money from protection from the Asian businessmen. During his arrest, Vikrant Dapa attempted to bribe the Transnational Organized Crime Unit with up to 300,000 Kenya shillings, but they refused to take the money. I was abused by relatives. It's not foreigners, and when you talk to people about that... Sophie Otiende, a victim of human trafficking when she was 13 years old, works with awareness against human trafficking in Kenya famously known as HART, as a survivor and advocate for human trafficking. There is no way that people are saying Kenya is a, is a source transit and destination and it wasn't happening already. The truth is we only use to highlight cases of trafficking for Kenyans going to the Middle East. Women sometimes and children especially girls, are moved from one place to another. They could be from this country to another country, from another country to this country, or even from county to county, because we have cases of, you know, girls moved from Busia, taken to Mombasa, and because you're vulnerable, you've never traveled in your life, and you get to a place where you don't know anybody. So whatever that person tells you to do, you will do it. Katie and News Crime and Investigations Desk has been following up on the cases of human smuggling, which have been on the rise in the region with hundreds of young men and women from different countries going through Kenya in search of employment. Lango Kubwa area within Starehe Nairobi faces of despair, a story of hunger, pain and enslavement. Mm. 
Most of the victims here are aged 19 to 45 years. The hali ni wamba zino. Amande hali mzidu ao. Ni from Comoros. Ali fika hapa. Ali alianza kutafuta mambo ya visa ku kufika Casa Blanca. Alafu ni yeye alijitafuta Comoros akona na nusu ya familia zake wanamsaidia. It is a common picture in Kenya's capital city as hundreds are being arrested as economic refugees. The door for human traffickers widens. Bado wata wata seto hapo wanaenda mpaka South Africa. South Africa unatafuta nini ukimuuliza wanakuambia tunaenda kuchimba mawe. Kuna mawe na chimbo huko nafikiri. Wanaenda kuchimba hiyo mawe. Baada hiyo mawe sasa mtu anajikatia visa. Visa ya kuenda Ulaya sasa kabisa. At the Kenya Ethiopia border hundreds of refugees continue to throng the country. Most of them are occasionally arrested. Many others had in rented houses in Nairobi. Kila wakati wao waoni ni shida. Kukaa kwao na kuangaishwa kila wakati kuchapwa na kutolewa ama mwenzake na uliwa hiyo ndio shida waliona. Hii sasa kukaa kwa nyumba moja na nyumba hiyo ukiingia saa hii inanuka kama mavi. Mtu hawezi karibia hata jasho yao sababu mtu kutoka kutoka mali to alitoka makwao hata lodging ya Ethiopia wanafichwa bado. Jasho ni hapo, utungutsirwali ni hiyo moja, shati ni hiyo moja, mpaka South Africa ni hiyo moja. Si amekataa kukufa huyo? Eh? Eh. We have a very long porous border with Somalia and also uh, Ethiopia. Is uh, the reason now creation of uh, uh, the AP has the lead agency in, in terms of uh, protecting those areas uh, which uh, we may not be having gazetted entry points. So the government is doing a lot to ensure that uh, we enhance our border security measures. And you know, this is also very critical. Uh, not, not, not only in the fight against human trafficking, but also in the war against terrorism. Back in the barrels of Asian trafficking, Anya and the girls are packing. They can no longer endure the pain of forced labor. I'm begging you, please, please bring us our passport and please allow us to go back to India, please. The Indian consulate in Kenya, together with the director of criminal investigation, stepped in and rescued the girls. But the journey of trauma through the police stations and courts away them. And once these girls go back, we actually alert all those points of departure from India, saying that this is the point from where they departed, these are the names of middlemen who may have helped in this entire thing. So we want to put an end to those networks. Right now we have two cases going on in court of human trafficking. Uh, we were able to arrest uh, some of the key cartel members uh, who are actually Kenyans, uh, who are involved in trafficking Ugandans. Uh, you, you know, you, you, Uganda has been having a problem with uh, uh, the, their, their young ladies who have been going to employment in the Middle East, particularly Oman, uh, but because it has stopped, so they have decided to use Kenya. Most human trafficking cases have not seen convictions in Kenya. As Anya and her colleagues are deported, the cases still continue to pile up in courts. Most of the most of the people say that the threshold of evidence for trafficking is very high. It's difficult. Trafficking is a process. If you're going to go to court, you have to prove that this person, the whole process happened for the purpose of exploitation. And it's very difficult to prove that in court. So in most cases, uh, people focus on the exploitation. Then when you think about something like labor exploitation, it's very difficult to prove labor exploitation in court. So most of the time the cases that get to court are sex. And most of the time they're not tried under the Sexual Offenses Act because it, it is just easier to prove it. So most of these peoples, uh, people are violating basically the immigration laws of Kenya. And also, they are able to get away from India because they have this visa. And with a genuine visa, the immigration authority in India is also unable to stop them, even if they suspect that there is something which is not quite uh, all right. 
it's very difficult. So both these authorities have to work with each other. What happens to the hundreds of victims of human trafficking left in police cells? Who will cause the pay of deportation? And who will treat the trauma patients? That's the true price of human trade. Police go to these uh, you know, brothels and then arrest the women and take them to jail, forgetting that these are women who've been sexually exploited. Why aren't we arresting the men who are going in these spaces or the people who pimp these women and make money out of these women? Victims are left questioning whether their decision to aspire for a better future was really worth they are becoming merchandised. Mr. Mohammed, KTN News. This is